I'd like just say, hey, everybody, and then Dan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, cool. Thank All you. right. Tell me awesome. now. <laughs> yeah, I think we're live. All right. Well, welcome everyone to our webinar. This is part of the Symboli webinar series, and I'm really excited today to be here with my friend Brian. And as everyone comes in, we will check the chat and then we'll get started very soon. Cool. Hello, everyone. This is Brian from Symbaloo. I'll be uh, joining Shannon here and showing you all a little bit of a, a little bit of the ins and outs of Symbaloo. Um, but yeah, before we get started, we're trying to let this uh, live stream sort of catch up, give people a little more time to, to uh, attend here. Let's see who's here. We have Amy Lucas. Hello. We have Linda from Toronto, Canada. Hello. Um, we have Mary from Riverside, California. Hello, Mary. Uh, we have a hello from Massachusetts. Hello, John. Marielle from Austin, Texas. Hello, everyone. Allison from British Columbia. Prince Rupert, British Columbia. Nice. Awesome. Great to see everyone. Thank you all for joining. We'll be getting started here shortly. All right. If you do have any questions during the webinar, please go ahead and just shoot them into the chat. Um, we'll be going through a little Q&A after the webinar so that way we can answer your questions or concerns. Um, so feel free to enter your questions there. All right, I think we can get started now. If you want to go ahead, Shannon, let's. Uh, yeah, let's awesome. Let's get this going. Okay, well, today we're going to talk about creating virtual library spaces for blended learning and all learners. My name is Shannon McClintock Miller. I am the district teacher librarian in Van Meter, Iowa, and I also serve as the Future Ready Librarian spokesperson. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Shannon M. Miller, and I blog at The Library Voice. And I also wanted just to put my email in in case you have any questions. I'm always happy to help you afterwards, too. Yeah, hi, and I'm Brian from Symbolu here. Um, you see my email there. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Um, yeah, just been with Symbolu for about four and a half years now, so uh, I'm here to share what I know about the tool and help everyone out, so. Awesome, yeah, it's always helpful to hear from Brian. Well, when we think about our libraries, I think that especially now we wanna make sure that our libraries ignite creativity and curiosity, promote reading, collaboration and inquiry, and foster an amazing community that offers so much to our students and our teachers and families while connecting to the world. So we want our virtual spaces that we create to also be a very essential piece of our libraries, especially now as we teach within virtual blended and face-to-face -face library and spaces. Now at my school, we all were at home, of course, last spring, starting in March. And in August, we went back to school. We're on our 13th week now, face-to-face -face with our kids. And so, they're coming into the classrooms and they basically stay like there all day long with their teachers and our kids. That's my son in the middle. I had to put him in because our boys play in the state finals this Saturday, but we are playing sports at Van Meter and we're trying to really carry on with as much normalcy as we can. But a lot of what we're doing too is making sure that our kids that still are at home learning virtually are having all of the resources that they need. And because our kids aren't coming to the library as much as they did before and it looks different and that they're connecting to resources in a lot of different ways, we wanna make sure that we've really built out our library spaces this year to be a hub of that virtual learning and literacy that we want from our libraries. And so just some things when we think about our virtual library spaces, we want to bring our library program and our library online. We want it to be a place for all learners anytime, a place for everyone, including our students, teachers, and families where they can engage. And it's ever evolving to make sure that we keep up with the things that they are also doing or maybe the new things that we hear about. 
We want to make sure that we're connecting to reading, learning, creating, and exploring to create a special online reading community. This is really important to make sure that it is collaborative, a space for all to contribute to, and a place to connect globally, not just to the people within our community, but to collaborate and to connect with people around the world. And of course, we want it to be a fun place that they want to visit again. And so when we think about what we do as librarians, and, and I always refer back everything that I do to our standards within AASL and the ISTE standards, and also the framework that we have as future ready librarians. So when we think about our library spaces, we wanna make sure they're connected to literacy. We wanna make sure that it's a great place that is curated awesome, that it really builds those instructional partnerships. We really wanna make sure, and I'll share lots of examples today, that our kids are empowered by going to our library space, not only as creators, but also as readers. And all these things too, we wanna make sure that it is supporting not only the learning at school, but also the learning that is going on at home. And so when we think about that use of space and time as future ready librarians, I think that when we think about our library space online, that designing that collaborative space, it's not all about the library that we have physically within our buildings. It's also just equally important to really consider what we have online too. So first we're gonna look at some creative ways to curate and create an online library. And when we were told that we weren't coming back to school in March, I just got right to work and I had some work to do on my website. That's kind of one thing that I always think about every week, but sometimes there's other things that come up that are more important if it's teaching or taking care of things within our library, but it gave me some time to really reflect on our library space and to make it better, I think, that it's ever been. And so I put together just, I always have had a Google site, but I really put together a place for our remote learning and library site together. And this was a place that it wasn't just for me and it isn't um, still just for me to put things on. It has become a collaborative space for our entire elementary and we have one for our secondary as well. And so when the kids click on these buttons, it goes into the things that the teachers have put together around remote learning. And as we learn with our kids, you know, face to face, we're also teaching them about how to get to the resources that they need in case we do have to start staying at home. And so every grade level has these great learning guides. And I love this because the kids can click on everything that they need and get to all of their work. And so if we were told even tomorrow that we had to be at home, we have the tools and resources just curated in a place where they can get to them. Also, because library is a part of related arts, it's important for these connections and collaborations to, to make sure our related arts has a space on our library and learning site. And so each one of these, if it's a symbol or if it's a choice board, it goes to the resources that they need. Now, one thing that I really wanted to do too, when we think about our library space and just bringing it home and, and having it used for like blended learning is to make sure it was interactive. And so I put together just a choice board in a Google slide. And when the kids click on these different images, they can go to all the things shown in the drop down menu. And so it has become a interactive space where the kids then can click on this and they absolutely love it because they don't have to worry about that drop down menu. Maybe some of them forget about it when they come and they can see exactly what they need. It's also great because if you do this in a Google slide, you can embed it onto like your Google site or maybe you drop it into Google Classroom or Seesaw. I put it on the front page of my Destiny Discover. And so then the kids can get to these resources that they need too. So it makes it really nice. Now also the choice board thing has become a huge part of our library and how we're just really curating resources around different topics. And as shown here in the one that I did for our library, that was also done just in a Google slide, just like the choice boards are. So I open up a Google slide and I build it with links and images and videos 
whatever I can think of to bring it together around reading and learning and creating and things that they can do, you know, all throughout the month if they're at school or at home. And so this has been a really great thing to have for our kids, but it's also something that you can get to as well. And so don't reinvent the wheel. You guys can use these too. And we will share a link to these slides afterwards. And so you can then use all these and the slides are just linked right into these Google Slides. So feel free to use all of those. Another place that is really important is our virtual maker space. And this goes to, again, just all kinds of places, you know, that we can bring that learning home um, to all learners, not just as a learning remotely, but even during holidays or weekends, whenever they wanna pick this up and do something really fun and creative, they can go there. Now, one thing that I do too is when our kids come to school, the first week I make sure that they have Symbolu on their devices because Symbolu is our hub where we have everything. If it is the site that we're looking at with our school library, if it's a choice board, Everything is organized from preschool up to our 12th graders on Symbaloo. So in this Google site, I just have this little link right at the top. If they ever forget where it is or maybe something's happened where they've bookmarked it on their Chromebook, they know that they can go to our library site and they can see they can click on that and then get to our Symbaloo. And so I'm going to talk in more detail about Symbaloo, but I really want to make sure that the message is conveyed of the importance of Symbaloo within our school. I've used it from the very beginning. It is one tool that we just use every single day at school, at home, and throughout blended learning in so many meaningful ways. And I could tell you story after story about how kids get to all of their favorite resources because they are curated and together in one place, but it's also because they are organized, you can organize them in a meaningful way to your kids. And so they provide that access and equity that they all need during remote and during all learning, regardless of what it is. And so within our symbol, you can see that that little drop down menu it shows all of the web mixes within Van Meter Schools. And so kids can get to, you know, not only what they need, maybe within their class, but even see things like special ones we have around makerspace or coding or digital citizenship. And I love that because it keeps it all in one spot for our kids. Now with our elementary, this is something that we've done for a long time. Our elementary, you can tell at the top, it's organized by grade level. This is very similar to with our middle and high school. And then when the kids click on whatever grade they're in, it takes them then into that web mix for that grade level. So for example, this is our first grade. And I change this out, I mean, almost at least every week, but probably almost every day sometimes because we're adding things like we just had the election and we had Veterans Day today and it's November. And so all kinds of things are constantly changing on this web mix. And it's great because my kids know or the teachers know related arts and even families that these things are evolving. And so they know they can go to the top and find everything they need. Just like our reading resources or resources that they use for research, we put them all together so they can get to the resources anywhere they are. Now with our library rotations this year, our library lessons that we do, I also am setting those up in Google Slides. And so they have become now just interactive Google Slides as well, kind of like the choice board that I showed you earlier. And it's nice because I can even embed things like a symbol. You can see on Monday, they learned all about places to read online in the reading symbol. And so it's constantly just taking those things and making sure that they are connected. But you know, you can't tell kids enough and teachers the places that they can find things. And so I always make sure to be tying these together. If it's showing them in a choice board how they get to Symbaloo or even on Symbaloo how they get to like our library class or related arts and other things. I also love how we can smash together different curation tools and other digital tools and apps with Symbaloo. 
things like that we use like um, collections by destiny this is an important part of our library because we use destiny discover for our library automation system and within a collection i can bring in not only resources that i might find online but also things that i have in my collection so an ebook or an audio book maybe it's another collection but again i can tie in all those symbols i have and so on a symbol you might see a collection and in a collection you might see a symbol as well or a choice board for example and so these things all go together to work together for our kids and comes back again to that skill that we have as librarians and within our future ready librarian framework of being really good at curating resources and so this is a van meter read symbol but you can see that all those things come together on there same with like digital citizenship. This is something that, you know, not just like once a year we should be teaching it or something like coding. We should have resources available to our kids all year long. And this is actually one of my kids' favorite places to go because they love the internet. Awesome. They love going to play the breakout games and they love the different even books that we have about staying safe online. And so I make sure that they know where that is. This week, actually today, we're thinking about veterans and commemorating that day and remembering them. And so we put together some choice boards too, where kids can go to books or Pebble go and read, or even a video about Space Force. And so I made sure that I had all those things connected. So I brought the library not only to our learners at school, but also to at home. Now, I wanted to put this in here because throughout this presentation, I'll be sharing lots of choice boards. And I actually have a Padlet where I keep all of these and you are welcome to use any of them. And so if you wanna make changes, make a copy or otherwise feel free to share those links with your kids because you can use them with them too. The next thing is to think about unique ways and tools to develop online reading communities. And this is a really important part of what we do as librarians. And I just showed you how our kids get to those reading sources through the Simbaloo, but also make sure that they show up on our library website as well. And so when we look at the Van Meter Read Simbaloo, the kids can get to all these resources, but they also can even dive a little bit deeper and get to even books or eBooks or audio books on what we have too in our collection. So this is one that's really fun. This is Cantata Learning and all of Cantata Learning songs are actually um, they go to music and so all of them are on YouTube. And so what I did was I took all of the seasons, I think there's like four seasons and they had like two each year. So there's probably, or four years, I mean, so there's probably like eight seasons total. And every season I would take all of the covers and then just make a tile. And when the kids click on these, they go into the song. So that's a really great way to bring your library resources online and to your kids wherever they are. Now, when we look to you back at the collection that I created for places to read online and filling in with some of these choice boards, I think too that we think about how our library and connections with our kids have changed this year. Some of us are at school face to face. It doesn't look like this because we all have masks on and we're socially distanced. And a lot of us are still at home, but we still need to think about ways to bring reading to our kids, to bring literacy experiences to our kids. And so one thing that I love doing is, you know, just popping in and reading to our kids. But I made sure that I continued that as we went to virtual learning in March. And one thing that I did was I took our You've Been Book program and I put it online. And so with You've Been Book, we have these little bags and I put books in there and we probably rotate like every three or four weeks. And I pass these out and then they will um, put them up on their window and they read them throughout then that week or month to make sure that all the classes have had the books. And so when we started to stay online and learn at home, I just took all of the books. I took a little picture and this is just a Buncee and I put the covers in and then made sure that each one of those covers were linked to the book. So just another fun way to curate resources 
resources that you have within your library space. And then these virtually book things kind of came into play too last year when all through the summer we had our virtual camp adventure. And I love continuing to share these because there's no date on them. So it doesn't matter that we use them for 12 weeks throughout the summer. These can be used right now as well. Each week they had a different theme. And so like week one was imagination. And again, you know, not only tying in like that reading symbol and places they could go to be creative or code, but also tying in just a little choice board made in Buncee, just like we're doing for You've Been Booked. And then Again, showing it not only on our library site, but making sure that it's tied into our destiny, our, our reading symbols, wherever they could find that and those like paths kind of cross, we made sure that they were on those places. And so this one is going back to like our school library, how I made that interactive slide. We also, a big part of what we do, and I've already shared it a few times is how we really want our kids, especially now, to use Destiny Discover, our library automation system. And so on this little table in the picture, I have a computer and then that little sign and they can click there and they can go into Destiny to search for books. Well, when we were still virtual, a really important thing for us, and even now, is to get the kids more connected to the e-resources we have. And it doesn't matter in the past how hard we try, sometimes it's not really easy to get them connected and reading the e-books or listening to the audio books that we have. And we have a ton of books at our school that are provided by our state. And so I really wanted to make sure that our kids were visiting them. So I made this little Destiny flicks and I added all the covers from what I found within Destiny. And then when they click on the book covers, it will take the kids either into the audio book or the ebook. And so making just an interactive slide in Google and then making sure that they were connected. So I know this is something that a lot of people have asked me about, like, how did you do it? And I made a template and I just made it in a Google slide. You guys are welcome to copy this and you can call it whatever you want. If you don't have destiny, it could be ebook flicks or book flicks or audiobook flicks, whatever kind of template that you choose. And all of these are linked so you can use them as well. And then I made posters and I then distributed them to the classrooms because I wanted to make sure that they also had them where they could easily scan it with their device and then they can get to these resources too. The last thing is to think about just exciting ways to engage your community and global connections. We have all these great things that we're doing. We're sharing our library site online. We have great symbols going on. Like we wanna make sure that we're not only celebrating the things that are happening within our library, but that we're sharing it with our community too and just globally. And so we have a Twitter account, we have an Instagram account and a Facebook account and everything is branded the Van Meter Library Voice. And so our families and our kids and other people around the world can go in and see what our kids are up to and what's happening from the library. But the really great thing is just to constantly be promoting those things that you have. And if we don't do promotion of the great things that we're creating and that we're spending time on, we're gonna have a really hard time like bringing the library home to our kids and making sure they're connected to all these resources. And so when I have something special that I create, if it's a symbol maybe for social emotional learning, I will share it on our Facebook page with a link. Yesterday I made a coding choice board with our code coming up and I shared it with a link. And it also is tied to a symbol that we have around coding. And so something like this, you know, sharing it, it not only is great to have our teachers see what is happening, but then our families can use it with their kids too. When we celebrated Digital Learning Day, which is coming up in February next year, we had a whole day of just different stations throughout the library and the kids could come in and connect. But one thing that I did is I spent a lot of time putting together just a symbol web mix of all the different stations and places they could go. So by doing this, this was actually right before 
we all started staying home in March and it was great to use for virtual learning. I was so thankful that I had this because my kids remembered that special event that we had in celebration and I had posted it on our Facebook. And so then our families and our kids could go there and even extend that learning that they had learned within digital learning day. And so something like that was really important. Another thing that we're doing this year is celebrating just library and learning all throughout the week um, within our library. And I create just a little poster each week. This is again in Google Slides and just change out the information. I actually make another one and just keep it going so we can keep it all throughout the year. And one really special thing that we've added this year are virtual pop and story times. And since the kids aren't coming to the library for related arts and they're not spending a lot of time there when they're checking out books, we have little pop and story times where my library associate is just reading books to the kids within their classrooms. But you know, making sure that you go back and you're sharing those with your kids who are home, or even just sharing them, you know, continuing to share them and celebrate those with your teachers and also your students is so important. A lot of the events too that we get and we add to them are from Skype in the classroom. And I can't say enough great things about Skype in the classroom because every Wednesday, and at least on Wednesday, they have a special event. If it is celebrating Dot Day with Peter Reynolds, if it's going on a virtual field trip to learn about polar bears, like they just have so many great events. And so check out Skype in the classroom and everything they have, but also spend time yourself reaching out to authors and illustrators and publishers and companies because we're all, you know, trying to kind of all in the same boat right now. And so a lot of our authors and illustrators are not traveling to and they're at home and they love connecting with your kids just like always. And so really reach out and stay connected in those fun ways. And everything that we do, you know, I put it back onto our library site and make sure that I share it on Facebook and our other social media streams and just even in a newsletter or email just to keep your kids connected. Now that the library is open and our library is open for each classroom about 10 minutes out of the week where they can come in, they search with their eyes, they look up books on Destiny and they find their books. And I can't tell you how happy they are. You know, that's the thing they really, really want to connect to are physical books and the library space and things that they find. And finding those perfect books for our kids, our opportunities, our learning, I think just thinking about how we can bring them together using tools like Google Sites and Symbaloo, our collections by destiny, like that's what it means to our kids is to have a space where they can continue to connect to that reading and learning. And so even though these little guys right now are really lucky that they're getting to pick out books, we know that it might not be that way all throughout the year. And we need to do everything we can to make sure that they have the library with them wherever they are. So now we're gonna hear from Brian as he shares the ins and outs of Symbaloo. Great, thank you so much for that presentation, Shannon. That was wonderful. Very elaborate. Um, but yeah, let me see here. Let me share my screen and I will get started here. Um, let's see, are you able to see the web mix here? Are you, uh, let me double check, see if you guys are able to see. Oh, actually, would you mind to um, stop? Yeah, stop stop. yeah there. There, you there you go. Great, all right, let me try this one more time here share my screen and then if you can just confirm whether you see the web mix that would be great yep awesome okay so yeah so basically i will be here to show you more so the ins and outs of symbolo and how you can get started uh whether you're a new user or um you know a recurring user and you just want to brush up on your skills i'll show you um you know the how to's on how to create your web mixes and tiles as well as uh explain and show a couple of new little features that we have uh here in symbolo so without further ado i'll just get right into it um so this here, this little grid system, we call our symbol web mix. Um, and that is composed of these little squares, which are called tiles. Um, these little squares host any shareable links, websites, images, videos, documents, you name it. Um, 
you can create those. You can search up tiles within our database. You can copy and paste them from the internet. Um, and yeah, there's just various ways that you can add these. But to get started, to go ahead and quickly add a webmix, you'll see this little plus tab up at the top. Um, and if I click on that, you'll see you have this little prompt where you can then type in a webmix name or search through our webmix gallery, which I will show you here shortly. Um, but to create this, you'll uh, let's just add uh, webinar webmix here. And you can select whether you want this to be an RSS only webmix. Uh, but we'll click the green little add button, and now you'll see we have an empty grid or an empty web mix here where you can then start composing and compiling your tiles. Um, there are various ways to add and create web mixes uh, in addition to this little plus tab icon at the top, where when you navigate to your My Web Mix menu here on the left-hand side, you'll see add a web mix, which is basically the same function as the little tab at the top. And we have a add a web mix with quick start feature. Um, when you click on that, you'll see it'll bring you to this page here uh, where there are different um, sections for, of tiles for different categories, education, social, and so forth. Uh, here, what you can do is quickly select any of these tiles. They'll highlight uh, there with that little orange border. Um, I'm just going to select a few just to um, fill in that web mix there. But you can choose whatever you like. And then once you're done, you go all the way to the bottom and click Create Web Mix. Once you click that button, it'll take you to a following page here where you will see uh, recommended web mixes. Um, and you can install these or not. You can skip them. But if you do want to install any of these web mixes, you can click on this little check bubble at the bottom right of each little section. Um, and once you're ready, click Install the Selected Web Mixes. Here you'll then see uh, that web mix that I created by selecting all those tiles. Um, it was already compiled or filled in here with those tiles there that I selected. Um, and yeah, you now have a web mix with various resources. Um, one other feature that's very uh, useful and helpful, um, which we've just recently updated, is our Symbaloo web mix gallery. So if you navigate to the top right and visit your little uh, user icon, you click on Symbaloo gallery. It'll take you to this little search page where you can type different subjects, uh, grade levels, whatever it may be. And for today, we'll type in reading. And we'll click that search button there. And uh, I do apologize for the internet here. It looks like there's a little bit of a lag. But what this will do is once you uh, click the search button, it'll take you to the results page with many web mixes that have been created and publicly shared by other Symbaloo users. Um, so you'll see here Dr. Carol Literacy Lab, uh, a third grade reading web mix, reading AR. And what you can do is you'll see a quick little description of the web mix, where it was created, um, how many users are following it. Um, and if you do click on the web mix image or the title at the top, it'll take you to a web mix preview page, where you can see just a little more on the web mix. It'll give you a closer look at the tiles that are within that web mix there. And down below it, you'll see some recommended web mixes. Um, this web mix gallery feature is, is really great. And it's helpful in the sense of if you are maybe a new user, you can scroll through the web mix gallery and kind of take a look at what has been shared there publicly by our users. Uh, it'll help you get some inspiration or find ideas on what you can do to create your own web mixes. Um, and another neat little feature here is you can add these web mixes to your account. So if I do click on that blue little add a web mix button, you'll see that now I'm back in my account, and we'll see in addition to the web mixes that I've created and added, we now have that one that I've just um, imported from that web mix gallery. Now, by default, these web mixes will appear with this little padlock, uh, meaning that you are just following the web mix or you're following the original creator's uh, resources here. So any changes that they make, whether they add new tiles uh, or organize them or further personalize them, you'll see those changes appear here on that web mix. So if I right click, I won't be able to um, edit, copy, move, delete, or do anything like that besides share or copy the URLs there. Um, but again, one of the helpful features is if we click on this little following button at the top, it'll open up a prompt on the left hand side where you'll see unfollow and claim web mix um, among, you know, commenting on the web mix or rating the web mix here. Um, but if we click on unfollow and claim web mix, that will then make a timestamp copy of this web mix grid here where you can then unlock it and actually make your own edits. So you can start to delete tiles and maybe add your own, um, You know, reorganize these however you'd like. And again, it's just a great way to save time, find inspiration um, you know, from other 
Symbolu users. Um, and once you're done adding your personal touch to it or fixing it however you like, uh, you can then share it and republish it um, in to your uh, personal Symbolu. You can share the Webmix preview page or publish it to one of our Symbolu Pro web spaces, uh, which I'll discuss in a little bit. Um, but now let's go into creating a tile here. Um, so on an empty webmix or any of the uh, empty spaces on any other webmix, you can simply click on add a new tile here. Um, and you'll see this is the new prompt for the new webmix um, tile search feature. Um, down at the bottom, you'll see suggested tiles that auto populate there. So you can click on any of these. Let's click on Google Drive and it'll immediately add it to your webmix. Um, what you can do is if you do have um, a pasted URL onto your um, device's clipboard, you can simply click paste, uh, paste from clipboard there, and it'll populate the box, or you can type in um, you know, a URL there into the search bar. You can also search um, keywords. So for example, we'll type in reading, uh, and you can search our database of tiles. We have over 35,000 tiles in our uh, Symbolu database. Some of these are uh, blank because of the internet connection here, so I do apologize. But you'll see that they're now populating, uh, the images are populating there. But once you find the tile you want to add, you'll simply click on it, and it'll add it to your webmix. Now, to further give you a little more uh, personalization features and functionality here. Um, I'll show you a few features where you can get a little more um, creative with your Symbolu. So at the top of the page, you'll see a few buttons. You have settings, share, publish, and this little vertical, um, these vertically aligned dots here where you can invite a user to collaborate on your webmix or simply remove your webmix here. Um, but what we want to do here is click on that settings button. You'll then be prompted with this little menu uh, that has settings for this webmix. So you can rename your webmix from home webmix to maybe a test webmix if it's something you're still working on. And that'll update in real time there once you click Save. You can also further personalize it by changing your wallpaper, so it'll change the background. You can also uh, select a webmix icon to further distinguish your uh, webmix is here at the top. So if I click on the little leaf there and click Save, you'll see the icon appear in the tab section. And then below that, you can resize your webmix. So if you need a little more space and you want to add some more tiles, you can go ahead and do so. Helps you, uh, again, give you more space to further personalize and rearrange your tiles. Um, you can make the webmix transparent to allow you to better see the wallpaper in the back. And what you can do here is add a new marker. So if you toggle on this little button here, your cursor, if you hover over the webmix, will then allow you to drag and drop over a selection of tiles. So now you'll see that by default, this appears white uh, by a white color there. But what you can do is you have this little uh, this new tab down at the bottom that says New Marked Area. You can actually click on that. Yeah, it looks like my internet's not allowing me to open it. But if you click on that, it'll open up the um, uh, text field there where you can actually add a title. Um, so you can label these different sections here. Uh, maybe this is like reading resources or anything like that. You can also click on the little bubble there. The uh, this, you'll see a little white circle there, but that'll be the color for the marked area. There we go. So we'll do reading materials, and then you can change the color, and then you can save your marker. And again, just gives you more personalization for your webmix there. Um, and these additional little icons, you have a little trash can, trash can, which will allow you to remove the marker you've created. You can then click on these little squares to uh, convert this selection of tiles into a grouped tile. So just like on your smartphone, um, you can create a little folder. And you can also just click these little uh, arrows to resize it. Maybe you want a different selection, um, and you can just drag and drop it there. But to show you what the grouped folder looks like, once you click on that, you now have a nice little grouped folder for your tiles. Um, now, we'll get into sharing, which is definitely one of the more important features here. Um, so there are multiple ways to share your webmixes and your tiles. Um, we have a Symbolu personal pro or a Symbolu personal account, and we have a Symbolu pro account. The personal account um, will not have the publish button at the top. And if you see on the left hand side, you have these little icons, which are our uh, Symbolu web spaces, um, which we'll all discuss here shortly. But to share on a personal account, you'll simply click the share button once you've selected your webmix. And this will bring up this box here where you can then edit the webmix name. Whoops. You'll edit the webmix name. 
you can add a little description here. Let me just type in test. And then down at the bottom, you have some related keywords and tags that you can add and edit. Um, so that way, if you do decide to publish it publicly within our Symbaloo gallery, um, it'll help other users find your WebMix here. And you can see the discoverability score down at the bottom. But if you don't want to share it publicly in our gallery, you can actually just share it privately with your friends. So only those users that have access to the share link, once you click the share my WebMix button down here at the bottom, you'll see that it'll open up the right hand side, providing you the share link. So if I copy that share link and I want to share it with a friend, I can email it or simply paste it into my web browser. And I'll see the WebMix preview page, similar to the one we saw um, by selecting a WebMix in the gallery. It'll show me the description, the user that created the WebMix, and I can then go ahead and add that WebMix to my account. We have additional features such as sharing via email there or accessing the embed code. Um, whether you want to embed it into a site, um, wherever you want to embed it, you can grab that code and utilize that there. And the last options down are the social settings, so or the social share features. So you can share via Facebook, Twitter, or through Google Classroom. Now, that is the sharing for personal Symbaloo accounts. If you do and have created a Symbaloo Pro account with your web space, um, the web space will appear on the left-hand side. And to show you a little more on web spaces, uh, you'll see that I've created mine here, which is Mr. Brian's class. And if I click on the logo here or select any of the web mixes, I'll click on school resources. You'll see at the top that I now have a custom domain here, Mr. Brian's class .com. When you create a Symbolu Pro account, you have the option to customize your domain. And this is a great way of sharing your resources because the domain does not change. So I, I will have it Mr. Brian's class until I am done using Symbaloo, um, whether that be in a few months or a few years. The, the domain stays the same, and this is a great way to share that link across all of your devices in school or set it as a bookmark within the browsers on your student devices. Um, another great feature of having the Symbaloo Pro domain is that you can actually share multiple web mixes just within that single link that will never change. It'll make it again make sharing easier. So I can then you know check out the classroom web mix that I have, or go back to my school resources and access the tiles there. Um, but I'll go back and show you how to publish your resources there. So for example, I have the Dr. Carroll Literacy Lab web mix that I grabbed from the web mix gallery. If I've made my changes and I'm ready to share with my students, what I'll do is click on the publish button at the top, and you'll see any of the web spaces which you can create and add multiple. You'll see them appear at the top. But down at the bottom within Mr. Brian's class, uh, we'll see we have the public workspace visible on mrbriansclass.symbaloo.com. And this is where I want to publish that WebMix. We'll click that green button there. And it'll then turn into a little unpublished button. And it will give you additional icons here, where if I click on this little arrow, it'll take me to view the WebMix on my web space. So we'll see now if I'm a student, I can actually access school resources, classroom web mix, and now the Dr. Carroll Literacy Lab web mix. So again, it's a great way to share your resources um, and a great way to just keep it all together within a single place. If I ever want to remove that web mix and make it private, maybe I need to make some changes or I just want to stop sharing that web mix, I'll simply come back into the publish settings. So we'll click publish when we're logged into our account. And then we'll hit, hit that little unpublish button. And the button will then turn green. And if I go back to mrbriansclass.symbaloo.com and refresh that page, we'll see those changes appear. So whenever the students log back into your domain or visit that URL there, they'll see the resources that you've shared um, in real time. As long as they just uh, refresh their page or log back in um, to their device, they should have these changes appear. And basically, those are the most important features of Symbaloo. Um, and as of right now, I'm going to hand it back to Shannon. Um, but if you do have any questions, please feel free to shoot them into the chat box, and we'll get to those after the presentation. All right, I'm going to take back over here. I learned so much, too. That was amazing. So thank you for that. <laughs> Absolutely. I always like, I always love listening to new things about Symbaloo and other products because when you listen to, you know, if you're going to a conference or you have a webinar, you just always learn so many little ins and outs. So as you were doing it, I was like bookmarking things. And so thank you for that. <laughs> I loved it. Absolutely. And I, 
I, I, I'm really excited to share a special new place as well that we started this summer. And it's just for us as future ready librarians. You can go to this URL at the bottom and you can follow now the future ready librarians web space. And this is really great because it gives us a place to curate all of the great resources that we have for future ready librarians. And so if it's a webinar or the frameworks or a video, maybe it's a blog post. There's been a few new things. The conversation starter is something that is new. And also we have a new podcast series. And so that is part of this as well. But as you can see over on the side of mine, this is just a screenshot of my Symbaloo. I can see just as Brian was saying that I can see my Van Meter um, web space, and then I can also see that little future ready icon. And so it makes it really easy for me to toggle back and forth and not only add resources to this, but also to be able to find it if I'm, you know, at school or maybe doing something that I want to look back on as a resource that I have seen in future ready. So it makes it really, really handy to be able to find those things and then to share them and even make little quick updates. And so I love that. And we would love to have you guys all join that free space that Symbaloo has so graciously given to us. And so thank you for that. So now do we have time for questions? Yeah, we definitely have time for questions. Um, I know I have my colleague Derek in the back end already answering some questions through uh, YouTube. So hopefully he was able to help a lot of you out. Um, but we also do have a little sheet here. He's been feeding some questions, so that way we can uh, try and catch up on some of the ones we missed. So awesome. um, I believe some of these might be for you, Shannon. Um, okay. And I'll just get started here. Um, it looks like Alexis is asking about Destiny Discover homepage. Um, and she says, I tried to put an interactive Google slide onto my Destiny Dis Discover homepage, but the embedded links don't work. Destiny can help me with Destiny can't help me with why. Can you tell me how to have the links work? I'm not sure if that's something for you. Um, it yeah. doesn't seem like that's anything related to Symbaloo. Yeah. So, um, well, I think it's because we, um, yeah, when, when you share your page, like when you share that um, Google link, it actually, when you saw that on my Destiny page, it's a screenshot of the actual interactive slide and then it links to that. So we used to be able to, I'm sure you remember this, we used to be able to have an interactive slide on the front of our Destiny page, but now you just, you would put the picture in there and then you can link, just highlight the picture and then click on the hyperlink little button and then put that link in there and make sure that your slide you know, like your Google slide is published, that you're sharing that link. So then the kids go to the published link where they don't have all the other, where they can see like the slides or the notes or whatever it might be. And so it's it's really easy workaround. It's so they can't click on, you know, anything on the slide, but then they go directly into that slide. So it works out good. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, let's see, we have another question. Um, someone is asking, will the presentation slides include a certificate that we can use for our professional development hours? Um, we don't currently have a certificate that we offer, but perhaps you might offer something like that, Shannon, or I'm well, not, maybe, I'm not sure. maybe we could come up with something together. Yes. And then the people that registered, then Symbaloo could send that out. And it would be, it's usually really simple. So we'll figure that out afterwards. And then we'll have Symbaloo send out that with all of the materials. How's that? Yeah, sound? definitely. Do you happen to have maybe um, just like an example of what this looks yeah, like? I don't absolutely. Believe yeah. Wonderful. Yep. Great. Uh, okay. And then it looks like uh, we have another question from Beth. Um, she asks, multiple school collaboration and share district wide. Uh, yeah. So definitely you can actually create a Symbaloo web space for your district to share your resources district wide. Um, we also have a whole top down, bottom up solution where you can connect. Um, for example, if you set up a district account, you can connect multiple schools to it. Um, and that way you can share different resources on your different web spaces. So uh, for example, uh, district district domain will have nothing but staff resources or things like that. And then um, your school 
uh, web space domains will host resources for your students or parents or things like that. So we definitely do have uh, a way to share and collaborate district wide. Um, if you want to find out more, please just email me at Brian, B-R-Y-A-N at Symbaloo.com and we can set up a demo for your school, your district or, uh, you know, help walk you through those things. Um, and then we have another one. I believe this one is for you, Shannon. It says, Christy says, Shannon, this has been awesome. Any additional ideas for parent community involvement activities in the virtual space? Yeah, so we've been thinking a little bit more about that with the holidays coming up and just, you know, some of those breaks that we <clears throat> have. And we've been thinking like we missed our literacy night. And so we are going to offer some um, author visits and like those author visits that I shared, they're not just for our kids at school and the same thing with like Skype in the classroom or Skype a scientist, like families can totally join those as well. And even kids when they're at home. So we have, you know, oftentimes like if Diana's reading or we have a special author event, we have kids that are learning remotely who are logging in as well, either, you know, with a parent maybe kind of by their side or even together as a family. Um, so we're thinking about having more of those like um, towards the evening and even something like we've been thinking how we could do like even like breakout EDUs, like using breakout rooms in Zoom, um, having like a you know, some kind of game night where we're using like Kahoot or Quizlet. So we're trying to brainstorm like ideas to really engage our families and, and just kind of take advantage of some of that. And then another thing that we've been thinking about is offering, um, and we've been doing some of this, some programming that's not, it doesn't have anything to do with technology. So offering, you know, like little make and take kits that they can take home, our STEM kits that maybe provide some materials for families over breaks. Or if you're at home um, virtually, we have a lot of schools now in Iowa who are starting to go virtual again. And so just thinking of ways that we can really just provide those materials and opportunities, but in a virtual and in just that, you know, tactile, like face-to-face -face way too. So it's, you know, just ever evolving. I'm constantly looking for ideas, you know, how to do that. But I think, you know, using some of the things that we've always done and try not to add on too many new things, just think about how you can do things, you know, different and, and take advantage of some of those things too. Awesome. Okay. Um, and it looks like we have one more question. Um, Carmen asks whether we uh, have, whether she has access to analytics um, and she wants to know if she can find out how many people visit her Symbaloo. Um, so we currently don't offer analytics on Symbaloo um, in regards to like how many people are accessing a web mix or your page, um, but we do have, um, actually this is maybe one little thing I forgot to hit on, which is our, uh, our Symbaloo learning paths tool. Um, which I can show briefly. Um, there are analytics built into that as far as how many students are working through the Symbaloo learning path, um, you know, how many students you have on the assignment there. Um, but in regards to your web mixes or your web space, we don't have any analytics tied to that. Um, but if you, uh, if you don't mind, Shannon, I'll, uh, if you yeah, want. Yeah, I, I unshared. Yeah, I unshared. Let me go ahead and share mine and I'll run through the learning paths quickly here. Um, okay, so are you able to see my, my web mix here? Yes, we can see it. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so with Symbaloo Learning Paths, you'll see the little Learning Paths icon. Uh, you'll see Simon, our little mascot here, below the icon, the Symbaloo icon. And if you click on that, uh, and if you do have a Symbaloo Learning Paths account, you'll see that there. But we'll go back to the, um, the Learning Paths overview here um, and to see analytics when it comes to open assignments and things like that. Um, this is the dashboard here. This is after you've created a learning path. This is um, you know, after you've already assigned it to your students. Um, we do have a more in-depth video that we can share as well um, you know, for everyone that registered along with all the other resources. Um, but just to show the analytics, we'll click on the open assignment here. And this is what it looks like. Um, this is all in real time. So of course, currently there's nobody here um, on the learning path working through the assignment, but there is a breakdown of the students and where, where they all are, their progress, um, you know, individual student standings here. 
you'll see a little uh, overview of the assignment and the pathway itself. Um, and if you hover over, you'll see little initials and that'll show you where the students are. Um, in addition, if you click on any of these tiles, um, those that you've added a question to will appear with this little overview. Um, it'll show you the question with the correct answer. Um, the students that have answered it correctly, incorrectly, which students viewed it, and the average time spent working through the question there. So um, this is the only part of Symbolu that does offer analytics, um, and this is free for you to use as well. Um, but yeah, again, in regards to web mixes and web spaces, there aren't any analytics there. So I do apologize for that. Um, but that was a little, just a little plug that I wanted to put in there just to show as far as analytics go. Um, so I'll uh, hand it back to you. Okay, great. Are there any other questions? Um, I Nope, I don't think so. That is actually it. That's so, awesome. yeah. And then I think this next slide, do you want to mention this? Um, what do we have here? Let me go back to, oh yeah, so we are offering, sorry, I was on yeah. the wrong tab here. We're okay. offering Symbolu Pro free through, you know, um, the pandemic. Uh, we did start this promotion, I believe sometime in April, um, and it was originally supposed to end um, early this month, but given the situation, we've extended it for free through uh, until the end of the year, or actually through to next year. I believe it currently expires. Um, January 15th. So um, if anyone has been interested in using Symbolu or um, if they have a, an account we're thinking about upgrading, um, please send me an email at brian at symbolu.com and I can help you get set up with the accounts and uh, make sure that it's all extended so you can use the full paid version for free. Um, we're definitely trying to do what we can here to help everyone um, you know, through this whole virtual learning landscape. So that's why we're offering it for free. And um, yeah, just trying to get more people onto the tool and see how valuable and helpful it is, just as you've shown through your uh, presentation today, Shannon. Yeah, thank you for that. We're all so appreciative of everything that Symbolu does and just the amazing space. I always tell people, like, I don't know what would happen if something happened to Symbolu because I'd be lost. So we really <laughs> appreciate everything that you guys bring to us. And I wanted just to put my information up here again, because if you have any questions or maybe I've shown something and you want more direction or even need somebody just to help you online, I'm always, always happy to help. And so you'll find my information and please feel free to reach out. And also on my blog, I write about Symbolu and other digital tools and also just projects and things that are happening within our library. And so you can check that out as well at the Library Voice. But thank you guys for coming. It was really fun and I learned so much from you, Brian. So thank you. Yeah, no, thank you so much for your time and for this great presentation. It was definitely a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for joining. And um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to, to Shannon or I and, and we can help answer some questions. I'm going to share also the link to the mm -hmm. slides um, okay. because I think that is um, also important. So then they have anything um, that we spoke about. And so I'll share mm -hmm. that in the chat here. Yeah, we're, we're, we will also post it in our uh, newsletter to everyone that registered. Um, you'll also get an email with a link to this and, and all that. We'll, we'll try and make it easy Wonderful. to access all this stuff. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Um, all righty. Well, I think that that's it. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.